For the people who have been waiting patiently to get a new PC or a graphics card, I think AMD has finally heard you and is answering the call. Well, sort of. So there's been a new leak for the AMD RX 6600 XT and also the RX 6600. Now these are mid-tier cards, so obviously the next logical step down from the RX 6700 XT. So today I'm going to go over the specs listed in the leak, talk about the likely performance of these cards, and then we're going to talk about who these cards are actually for. And also I'm going to go over the mining specs as well, because right now the GPU prices are still being determined by the mining performance of these cards. Okay, if you like this video, make sure to click the like button, also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. And we also have a Discord server, so come along and join us in the discussion over there, and I'll leave a link in the description below. This is a leak courtesy of Video Cards and Chipel. This is dated 12th of May, which is a couple of days ago. It says the 6600 XT, which is based on the Navi 23 GPU, will have 2048 streaming processors, 8GB of G6 memory, 4 particles. I'm not exactly sure what this means, but maybe it means 4 times 2GB of VRAM chips, 128 bit memory bus and Ethereum hash rate of 30 mega hash second with a TimeSpy graphics score of 9,439 points. The 6600 is a Navi 23 GPU, 1,792 streaming processors, 8 gigabytes of G6 memory, 128 bit memory bus, and Ethereum hash rate of 27 mega hash a second. It has a TimeSpy score of 7,805 points. Let's take a look at the streaming processors first. Compared to the 6700 XT, which has 2560 streaming processors, if you recall this was 40 compute units, so the 6600 XT with 2048 streaming processors will have 32 compute units. Compared to the 6700 XT, the 6600 XT should be about 20% difference in performance. The 6600 has 1,792 streaming processors, which works out to be about 28 compute units, so this should be 10% less performance than the 6600 XT. The 6600 XT and 6600 both sport 128-bit memory bus, which given that these are all using the same 16 gigabits per second memory clock speeds, should work out to be about 256 gigabytes per second in memory bandwidth. In comparison, the 6700 XT with its 192-bit bus has 384GB per second, so that card is for gamers who play at a resolution of 1440p, whereas the 128-bit bus is more suited to gamers who play at 1080p. Sure, gamers who want to play games at 1440p on these cards could do it, but they may find that the most demanding games such as AAA games will carry performance penalties with the lack of memory bandwidth at higher resolutions. There was also another leak on these GPUs from Chipel, which listed the GPU-Z specs of the cards. Nothing terribly exciting here that we didn't cover already, but the 6600 XT does carry a boost clock of 2684 MHz, that's up from a boost clock of 2581 MHz on the 6700 XT, assuming we're comparing reference models here, so it is a little bit higher. Let's check out these TimeSpy graphics scores. For the 6600 XT, we're looking at 9,439 points. So this new card is basically a 1080p version of the RX 5700 XT. The 6600 with 7,805 points puts it a little bit better than a RTX 2060 card. So if you're wondering about the actual performance in games, here are a few 1080p results taken from Tech Power Up, and you can check out their 6700 XT review, where you'll find results for more than 20 games. The 6600 XT should perform very close to a 5700 XT. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, a 5700 XT gets around 69 frames per second. In Control, it gets 63.2 frames per second. In Cyberpunk 2077, it lands at 61.2 FPS. In Red Dead Redemption 2, it's at 60.2 FPS. And in Watch Dogs Legion, it's at 66.8 FPS. So all in all, it does run a bit close to 60 frames per second. So obviously going forward, expect games to be more demanding, but these results are run at mostly high settings. So you could turn some settings down to squeeze out 10 to 20% extra performance. That said, if you're the type of gamer who wants to play it a bit safer, you can opt for a 6700 XT to get 20% better frame rates. 
Finally, let's talk a little bit about mining hash rates and we'll segue into pricing of these GPUs as well. From the leak, it looks like the Ethereum hash rate is about 30 mega hash a second for the 6600 XT and 27 mega hash a second for the 6600. That sounds about right given the 6700 XT with its 192 bit bus was achieving 47 mega hash a second. At 30 mega hash a second, new cards like a 1660 Super and an RTX 2060 were still going for 600 to 700 US dollars on eBay. The funny thing is that the RTX 2060, which is a far superior card than the 1660 Super, was going for about the same price. For now, if the 6600 XT and 6600 gets announced soon, expect an MSRP of around $399 and a street price of $700. There are still new 1660 Supers and RTX 2060 being sold right now, so these AMD cars will probably be in that price range. The advantage of the 6600 XT is that it's newer and has 2GB of extra VRAM and probably has a longer life than the already 4 year old 1660 Super. However, the 1660 Super still has a use as it's one of the lowest powered GPU mining cards available and is still reasonably efficient. Okay, that's it for this one. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.